let's talk about leaving your nine to five and the real truth behind it. And this is not going to be a video made for just anyone. This is going to be for those of you who want to start an event business or working a nine to five. And I'm going to give you the real truth. I'm going to give you the raw. And this is pretty hard for me to share. So bear with me because I'm going to be walking down memory lane and showing you guys real raw footage of me in moments leading up to leaving my nine to five and kind of where I am now with it. It is not where I want to be. So I was waiting for that moment. But just like with anything, if you wait till you're ready, you will never tell the truth or do the thing that you want. So here's my story on how I left my nine to five and where I'm at now with it. So I'm not even gonna go with the intro. I just wanted to let you guys know, I do have a membership where it's called Design Your Dream Society. And I kind of give you the step-by-step -step on how I was able to start my balloon business and then relaunch it start from scratch and it's been able to get me clients in the door who are willing to pay so if you're interested feel free to click the link down below otherwise let's get into the reasons why i left my nine to five i have to take deep breaths because this story is going to bring up a lot of old memories that really don't serve me anymore and in order for you to understand what it's like to leave your nine to five i wanted to give you guys the raw truth very transparent footage and i documented my journey when it came to deciding to leave my nine to five but it really stems even before then i was afraid to share my story because people i love dearly watch my channel and i have a extreme fear of being judged because of the things that I really put myself through unintentionally and intentionally leaving my nine to five was my choice and it's not an easy journey and I know my channel is to inspire you guys but I feel like if I'm not sharing my truth I am not giving you all all of what it takes to build a business and i've been waiting for the right moment as of now it is september 15 2021 when i'm recording this and my life has completely utterly changed and it's not the prettiest side <laughs> and i know i try to bring light and love and inspiration to you both but i feel like i want to be vulnerable with you guys with my truth I want to be vulnerable in a way that's transparent so you know that if my story helps you to know you're not alone and to know that it's not easy and to know that you're going to have dark days, I'm going to share, right? Regardless of who watches my channel. I always appreciate those who don't know me and to get to know me as I share these videos, but it's the hardest part is when people you do know watch your channel and they don't know the darkness that goes on or the endless crying and nights of negative negativity in a way where it's uncontrollable. And I'm at the point where it's just like, I have to get it out. I have to tell you everything that has been going on from start to finish and tell you where do I see myself and my business and how it kind of unfolds and hopefully where I want to go. So <laughs> with that long intro, if you're interested in hearing my story, feel free to keep watching. I haven't sat down on my floor. I figure like, let's take away all the fluff. Let's be very raw and real and I used to film on the floor because I didn't have a tripod to hold my camera and I used to use my table so I figured let me get down literally <laughs> to the realness of who Justine is behind my inspiring designs. Okay so my journey and leaving my 9 to 5 begins when I was a teacher. I know a lot of you who follow me on Instagram, who've been loyal subscribers since like forever on YouTube. You all know I, I was a previous teacher. It's literally my sole purpose of why I'm here. And I have to start at this point because it still affects me today. And I have to be very truthful about that because when 
God gives you something, a vision, a, a gift, a talent, a passion, a purpose, it will stay with you forever. So the decision of leaving the classroom still affects me today and I'm going to walk you through what I mean by that. Now, the reason why I'm creating this video is because I've seen a lot of 9 to 5 leaving the 9 to 5 videos and they're very inspiring because it works in their favor. Well, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not grateful. I'm not saying it's not working in my favor. I'm just giving you the ugly truth of what my journey unfolds. Now, I want you to understand this as a disclaimer because I've gone through something doesn't mean that you will go through the same thing. Some people thrive from leaving their nine to five and some people don't. And the people who don't thrive right away, I want to speak to those people because there isn't a lot of content about the truth of leaving, the dark side side of leaving um, your nine to five and I'm not here to scare anyone I just want to give and shed light onto my journey and if it inspires you to maybe avoid making the mistakes I've made or you know really taking what I've went through and my experiences and utilizing to benefit you so you can avoid that then so be it and that's why this video is created so let's start with 2014 actually I really should go back further but I'll just snapshot at 18 years old 2005 I was going to be an accountant my high school was a business school it, it focused on business and I had a finance teacher an accounting teacher I was just good at math so it made sense to become an accountant but I remember this day like it was yesterday <laughs> and I don't know was that almost 15 15 years 16 years ago I called my mom and I was like I think I want to switch careers I think I want to switch majors and I told myself I wouldn't cry but this was really really touching um, moment is that my mom could have said, you know, no, you you need to focus on what you're doing or here are the cons of why it won't work out. Like when you have a good person and a good parent in your life or guardian or mentor or whoever, they will make you believe in yourself when you don't even know how it's going to get done. And her words were ingrained in my soul because that's the reason why I started this channel and I'll get to that. And she said, all right. And I told her, I was just like, but it's such a financial, like, shift. Like, an accountant makes, like, triple the amount as a teacher. And she was just like, don't do it for the money. Do it because you want to do it. And I'll support you no matter what decision you make. And to this day, I was 18 years old, and I decided to switch my major and become a teacher. I give thanks with such gratitude in my heart for my mom because she's the reason why I'm here. She's the reason why I give back. Um, she is one of the people um, outside of my family and people who have encouraged me, my mentors and inspiration. My mom is the foundation of why I am the way I am. So I love you, mom, if you are watching. <laughs> All right, so no more sappiness. Oh, I didn't even get started and I'm already crying. Okay, so let's, let me take a break. <laughs> When you love someone so much, oh my goodness, it hurts. <laughs> All right, so fast forward. It took me nine years to graduate, which is why I graduated in 2014. I was a rebel in college. I didn't want to be in Orlando, whatever. So I finally graduated with my bachelor's in elementary education. And I had a certification that I could teach reading from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. So I became a reading teacher for middle school. And... They say your first year as a teacher is the hardest, and they are not lying. However, in my experience as a teacher, it never got easier. It just kept feeling like the first year. And through that experience, I thought I was going to be a teacher forever. I thought I was going to retire. I was not becoming a teacher to be rich. I was not becoming a teacher to be a millionaire. I wasn't doing I wasn't doing it because of the money. I didn't really care about money back then. Um and that definitely has changed. We'll get to that again. But I knew this is something I wanted to do whether it cost me whether it was making me poor or making me rich. I just knew this was the end goal and this was it and this is where I wanted to be until it wasn't funny thing about grieving is people think that you just grieve over the loss of a loved one when they pass away which is true but there are things that we grieve over that are not shared in the world and i i probably was in my second year and i realized this is not it 
this is not for me. Second year of teaching. I couldn't shake off that this career that I had chosen, that I had worked for, that I literally switched my entire major, my bachelor's, everything I study, every learning about kids, it wasn't it. So I stood as a high school teacher for three more years. And by the fourth year, I had to make a decision. And in the midst of me teaching for five years, I got married, got engaged. And again, there's a lot of things that go on in your in your journey and you kind of have to shed old your old self and i'm gonna say this now because it's still true to this day and i'm gonna be very truthful because when god puts a vision in your mind when god puts like whispers is what oprah calls it where the universe kind of whispers at you that you're not supposed to be here you're destined for other things and it still gives me chills to this day because through my depression and me wanting to stick with kids because kids were such a important aspect of my life and my life purpose that I couldn't imagine not teaching kids. I've worked with kids since I was 17 years old all the way up until I was 31 when I left. And I still miss it. I still miss it. However, I have end goals. So through the fourth year of teaching... That's when I started my YouTube channel. So let's talk about the start of my inspiring designs. All right, I had to get on a stool because I got pins and needles. <laughs> I created my inspiring designs as a YouTube because creativity and teaching basically on this channel saved my life. Um, as corny as it sounds, <laughs> it really did. I don't have any raw footage of me when I was a teacher. I didn't even think I should record this. The only reason why I started recording my journey is because Gary V had a book called Crushing It and I will link it down below. It's a really good book about using social media and showing the journey. And the one thing he shared in that book was share the journey as you unfold. Like stop waiting to your perfect entrepreneur or perfect content creator or perfect YouTube. Just share it. Share it now. Allow your audience to be a part of that journey. And that's what I did. When I started creating videos, it was an amazing feeling. It was, I got to be in my zone of genius. And I'm always talking about this in all my other videos is when you tap in, oh boy, magic can happen. The one thing I will say about lessons when it comes to transforming and becoming more of what you're destined to be when you put it out there, you're going to change in the darkest moments of your life right that's where change actually occurs it's not when it's good it's really when it's the lowest of lows like when nothing is working in your favor and you have no idea and you're at the point where you surrender and you pray right you ask god and you release it and you have no idea how it's going to happen in your favor and then it does and that's what happened right that was the first indication of me creating at the time I wasn't going to create a business but I, my husband was like you should sell the balloons so I did it now leaving the classroom I decided on our honeymoon in 2018 that I was going to leave I told my husband he I actually told him I'm not going to renew my license in the state of Florida so I am not a technically legal teacher here I just have a bachelor's but I can always get my license again but I refuse because I knew if I didn't have my license or renew my license I only had a few credits that I needed to finalize I knew if I did I would go back and I think that is true about all businesses and this is another lesson that I've learned on um, leading up to leaving my nine to five is that don't have a plan B. Stick with your plan B A and make sure you figure out how to make it work. Because the worst thing in the world for you to do is have a plan B when it comes to your plan because that plan B will eventually come into fruition. And your plan A of where you want to start this business, where you want to take off and be successful with it, that plan B will overpower that first plan. So when leaving your 9 to 5, I would say don't have a plan B. I left my teaching world and still picked up my balloon business started to pick up and as soon as I put it out there that I wasn't going to be a teacher anymore I used to work in after school program as I told you and my old boss 
he reached out and said, hey, there's an, a position open. Would you want to? So I always told myself, if I get another job after teaching, I'm going to get a job that's going to enhance my leadership skills. Well, put, you know, a couple of months later, at the end of the summer of leaving my teaching career, I started becoming a program manager. My last job before leaving to take on my business full time literally shook me to my core. I mean, there were times where I was completely depressed because of the outcome of certain experiences. Now, I'm not gonna share everything, but this is when I started to record myself. So I'm gonna share in the next few clips, um, I'm not gonna share every single video, but I am gonna share the most real raw things leading up to me leaving. Since June of 2021, I had decided that I was gonna leave and it was on a good note because everything in my life was going really well in that job. And these were the videos that were leading up to that decision. So feel free to watch. Hello. Wow, it's been a while. It's been a long time coming. Something's on my toe. Okay, so first of all, it is July 5th. Just I am off right now and I got some news to share. There's been a lot going on. So mindset wise, I am going to be putting my two weeks on July 2nd july 12th and then that means my last day will be july 23rd i'm putting it out there not because well yes because because i'm scared um there's a lot of thoughts that are going on in my head i'm talking to you know myself god seeing a lot of prayers and i'm a little scared you know i'm a little scared because i just know that i believe in myself more now than ever before there's something about me that has changed completely and my th negative thoughts have kind of died down. I'm eating better, exercising more, just becoming the person that I see myself in the future and doing whatever I do now is what I would have done in the future. So if you ever wanted to become the person, that business owner, that CEO, you have to kind of act now when it's not even true. And so I'm really powering in, listening to my affirmations. I am going to be focusing more on praying because I can't give nothing but gratitude towards God and the blessings that he's given me throughout my entire life and the courage that he's given me to push forward. I can only take a leap of faith. And if it doesn't work out, I'm okay too. I can always get another job, right? So today is... Monday, July 12th, and I officially put my two weeks into my job with no guaranteed income. <laughs> Talk about taking the leap of faith. Currently, what's going through my mind is I'm a little freaked out. There's like a calmness over me. I can't explain it. I'm not doing this out of anger. I'm not doing this out of... I'm not doing this for anyone besides myself. And it's been a long time since doing this business and seeing what it pans out. So I do have some plans per se. I plan on going back into my balloon business and start getting some clients that way. Kind of picking up where I left off from the pandemic. Push more content on my YouTube. So yeah, nine to five, Justine is done. So it is my last day and my nine to five. All right, my boss, one of my bosses won't be there. So <sighs> kind of almost made me cry, but I'm excited. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. It's gonna be a long day though. <laughs> Wish me luck. Okay, I am back. So it is 9.30, July 23rd. My official last day of working with my nine to five. Um, I am feeling all the feels today. <laughs> I, um, I don't know. I don't know how to feel. This is something that's very unplanned, very, 
unscripted like there's just i mean i have literally have to step into being uncomfortable and being okay with it i've never had that happen before so there's a lot of like fears that come up and a lot of things that that you don't know until it happens to you so right now i don't know i think i'm getting sad that's what i'm feeling sad and a little worried about not having a steady income right now but i know money will come and it always does oh there's a butterfly i always say that i pray to my angels and god and said you know for making the right decision and my answers are in the right direction just show me a butterfly <laughs> and there's one over there in the bushes it's 6 p.m <laughs> it's like a whole video of me going through so going through my journey of leaving my nine to five so as you can see i got some balloons some flowers some a, a nice card and my co like i said uh, everyone's like, are you ready? Are you are you excited? And I'm just like, it's going like this, up down. Like, part of me is just like, oh my God, yes. We get to build an empire. And then part of me, myself is just like, what the hell are we doing? I don't know. I don't know how to feel, I don't know. It's very numbing. It's almost like when I left the classroom, it was like, I don't know what the next venture is gonna be like, you know. This business is not something that I can just leave, like, it's gonna be for life and I'm, I'm here for the journey I'm here to see where it overcomes and I don't know I'm just it's a bittersweet it's already starting off on a great foot so stay tuned on to the next one so you guys have watched a little bit of what happened along the way, even uh, leading up to me actually leaving. Now, don't get me wrong. When there are big changes that are going on that you're excited about, it's you're on a high. So I was so excited to take this on. But let me tell you, honey, I got some clips after the job and it was extremely just like with anything. You have to go through what you go through in order to get to where you want to go. And it was tough. I will say that. Hey everyone. So today is August 2nd. And it is Monday. So I lost track of how many days I've been out of work. But it's week two of being on my own. It's Monday. It's the second Monday since I've been gone. I got my last paycheck. I, we just paid our rent. And... Right now, there's no money coming in right now, and I'm freaking out. I'm trying to stay calm. You know, I want to teach. It's my number one passion. It's it's in my heart. <clears throat> it's, although there's some fear that's, you know, in my heart or in my thoughts or my brains when it comes to leaving, but I know, like, I can't even explain this. Like, when you know, you know. Like, there's a calling out there, you know, that people don't, like, it's beyond my passion. It's beyond my passion. This is something that I can give it back to the world. <laughs> hey, everyone. So, it is Friday, August. <laughs> Why do I do this every time? Okay. I didn't record the entire week but I will give you guys an update of what happened. So I'm not sure where I left off, but I took a total of 18 phone calls um, that were going to help people get help and coaching that they needed to let them know which option is best for them. But when I tell y'all no one booked within the two weeks, as most of you know, last Friday, or maybe I didn't say it, I don't know. Last Friday was my last paycheck from my nine to five. So things were getting extremely tight and I was trying not to freak out. But I think it's natural when you're in the journey. 
I obviously the week was pretty like a, a roller coaster. Some days were good, some days were bad. So I've tried to stay calm, as calm as much as I can, um, with anybody who's pushed against the wall financially. Um, mind you, I don't know if I said this before, but I really don't have money and savings. It was just a little bit of what I need in my business that I haven't touched, right? So I had a conversation with my husband last night and I was telling him, I was just like, <sighs> I'm getting to the point of being so frustrated because I feel like I'm doing everything, everything that it takes to make the money, right? I'm being strategic on my spending. I'm being disciplined. Every time I release money, I'm saying more of it's coming to me. The problem was, was that there wasn't anything going on in my own reality. Hey everyone. So it is, it's been a while since I recorded myself because a lot has unfolded. I don't usually watch my videos after I create them because I don't know, I don't like reliving experiences. So today is Tuesday, August 17th. Um, it's about like seven o'clock at night. And I want, it seems like I'm trying not to come on here only when I'm like, things like hit the fan, but uh, this past week or last week, I got an interview with my business coach. It would have been a great opportunity, but today marks the week when I interviewed and I had just checked in and I wasn't given the position for the 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 job that I was seeking. Um, it was all online, remote, and I respect the decision because whatever comes to me is meant for me. And whatever it doesn't is not aligned with where I want to be. I'm choosing to stay positive. Um, it was just a hit to the ego this morning, but but yesterday I was on a phone call with my bookkeeper. She's also like you know a really good friend of mine. I had mentioned her in a couple of videos. Uh, Brittany and Lionel from Intrinsic Accounting and we had talked about like strategies like sales strategy strategies um, tasks to complete when it comes to my business and you know we came up with the idea of doing a membership um, it really wasn't my idea <laughs> so I can't take credit so I had prayed on Sunday you know I wish God would just show me what I should do because I still only have two designers. Um, the other designers who are in the program were grandfathered in because anybody who joins like in the beginning of anything that I launch usually gets some form of rewards for taking a chance on me and themselves. Um, but two designers is not bringing enough revenue in my life. So that's why I applied for the job. But I, I, I can see why I didn't get it, right? I'm an entrepreneur first <laughs> before an employee. So a lot would happen and me being kind of released and let go was a really a blessing in disguise. I know that there's going to be a bigger blessing, right? They say when things don't work out in your favor or you start, you know, hitting your upper limit in the sense of that's what I teach in my program. Like, you know, when you start to transcend into who you're supposed to be, things happen. And it is not an easy, it's not easy at all. So it's been <laughs> still up and down, up and down, up and down. The membership is going to be launched on September 6th. I've already decided the date. I didn't tell anyone. I am doing a balloon garland video for the first time in a year and a half. And that took three hours to film, which is ridiculous because Bloom Garlands used to take me like 45 minutes to an hour. So there's different techniques. I had shouted out one of my fellow designers in the industry who's located in Central Florida. Um, and she taught me a technique. So I wanted to, you know, deliver where credit's due. So I shouted her out and, you know, hopefully... We're even thinking about doing like a workshop where she teaches people. I'll be back. 
So here are my biggest lessons that I had to learn when it came to, you know, leading up to leading my 9 to 5 and actually where I am now. Uh, it's been a month and a half since I have left my 9 to 5 and I want to be very transparent and to know that I am nowhere near where I want to be just yet but I know it will work in my favor. So the first thing that you should be doing before 9 to 5 is to make sure <laughs> you have a savings. Oh my goodness! The worst thing in the world is to freak the F out because you can't pay your bills. I That is one mistake I made. Make a decision when you're ready to leave your 9 to 5 Make it when you're good because I had listened to this um, podcast and this woman was talking about, you know, don't leave because you're angry. Don't leave because you're sad. The hardest part about leaving anything or transitioning into something is when things are going so good. And I was like, oh, like <laughs> I still get goosebumps. The hardest part about leaving in my 9 to 5 was when things were so good. And I challenge you guys to do that, right? Don't leave out of anger because everything you're angry about, which is what she said, she's a life coach, so it makes sense. Everything that you're angry about, you'll eventually have to figure it out when you leave, right? Or wherever you go. So that's what was true when I left the classroom. I left the classroom because I was so depressed and so sad and so angry that I couldn't teach what I wanted. That everything that I was going through in my teaching world... I now had to go through in my nine to five my manager position and it was tough the first year it was tough because you're brainwashed and kind of have to grow up and so I did okay so another lesson that I've learned when it came to leaving my nine to five and and really going full throttle on your business and I said this before you can't run from yourself when it comes to you know, starting a business after you leave your 9 to 5, anything that you fear. <laughs> anything that you fear comes up to the surface. I gotta let that sink in, cause. So, what are my fears? My fears are I have such a fear of being broke being poor not having enough um i've had moments in my childhood where my mom couldn't even afford to give us lunch money right and sometimes i feel like that i feel like i'm exactly where those moments were in the past however i created a business where i do get money i do get people who invest in me i still have design your dream society but i also have my balloon business that i relaunched and I was able to get clients but just know every fear that you have in your nine to five will come up i mean not nine to five in general you have a fear of rejection you're gonna get rejected if you have a fear of being broke you're probably gonna get broke it's not that it won't happen and it might not happen again i said this in the beginning of the video it may not happen for you it happened to me for me because i need a lot of clearing of my own limiting beliefs I teach my designers to address those limiting beliefs, but this is not something that they should just stop, right? This is an ongoing process. Every single time you transition into a different portion or experience of your business, there are moments in time where some of y'all were dying to get one client. Maybe you haven't even gotten a client, right? Or maybe like, you know, you've gotten a few clients and we forget, we forget how far we've come. You know, maybe you didn't even get started with your event business, but you have the idea. This is why you're following my channel. This is why you're listening to this video. You know there's something there, right? Versus like maybe a couple of years ago, you didn't, this wasn't even a thought. I get messages all the time with such gratitude from people that they're so happy they found my channel. And this is why like I make videos sometimes not just for the keywords or for the views, but these videos like this is really for the people who are deep in wanting to start this event business. And if you want to leave your 9 to 5, these, this is my truth. This is my journey. It does not mean this will happen to you. You may have it worse. <laughs> Let's be very real. You may have it worse or you may have it so much better than I have. So there were lessons that I've learned. So where I am now. Leaving my 9 to 5, leaving teaching, has I'm still grieving over my old self. 
I am forever going to be an educator. <laughs> it's why I created this channel. It's the reason why I'm coach. It's the reason why I want to start doing like things where live live workshops and speaking engagements and conferences all over the world. Like I'm claiming it now. And I want you guys to hold me accountable. <laughs> that it will work in my favor. But a month and a half, I have to give myself grace because I've been hard on myself. I am nowhere near my financial goals. I am making just enough to pay my bills. But I, I'm a true believer that things will unfold in my favor. I don't know when. <laughs> I don't know how. And that is truthful when it comes to starting any type of business. You have to believe in yourself even when it's not happening to you. I'm really going back to developing into the Justine that I want to be and where I see her and what would she be doing now that's what I'm doing so I go to church to build my spirituality get closer to God not because church does that for me but it just puts me in a different type of vibe and then I'm walking every day for the most part during the week just to get my mind right shed all the sweet and negativity I feel good afterwards but I there was one service and I was on my Instagram story and I had said this and one of the services was like, what do you do when God doesn't answer your prayers? Let that sink in. Let's take a deep breath and absorb that. What do you do? And maybe you don't believe in God, right? What do you do when your business is not working out the way you want it to be? What do you do when everybody else is winning? Everybody else is getting clients. Everybody else is manifesting their dream life. What do you do? Leave me a comment. What do you do? What do you do when things don't work in your favor? When God is not answering your prayers? And I think the answer that most of us should say, and you need to believe this, is that keep going. <laughs> keep going oh my goodness when I tell y'all I am crying all the time and yet I still create content I'm such at, I'm at a crazy moment in my life where I don't know what God wants me to do I'm not getting creative I'm not I'm making lessons but I don't know I don't know but you know what I keep showing up I keep doing the damn thing and I keep going and I think that's how God wants it. You almost get tested to see how bad do you want this. And so my question to you, and you know, you can let me know in the comment section. I love reading your comments. I always, for the most part, respond to most of them, as long as I catch them. <laughs> Some of them I don't catch. But what do you do when things aren't working in your favor, right? Do you pray? Do you meditate? Do you read? Do you inspire? Do you walk? Or do you give up? You know, I hope this video really sheds light into you're not alone. You know, I'm going through it with y'all. <laughs> I am going through it with y'all, but I'm not scared to share my vulnerability anymore. Because I think my truth, my experiences, I always say this, God puts me through some crazy stuff. Because there's lessons I have to teach other people. Like you. And... I'm always grateful on the other side of the challenge. <laughs> In the moment, not so much. I am not grateful. I am asking God, why? <laughs> what in the world? But that's because I'm human. I am human. We all are. Nobody knows what this experience is meant for. You know, there is a divine path for you. And you get to choose whichever way you get there. But I think once you choose for the better, the good... It will work for you. Leaving your 9 to 5 is a transitional moment. It is pivotal because you will have to shed things that no longer are needed for the, your future self. Everything that doesn't work in your favor, quote unquote, I think everything is for you. Everything that doesn't, everything that seems like it's going against you, just know there's a really big breakthrough through that challenge. There's a change that needs to be taking place. There is experiences that you have to go through to get to where you want to be. If you want to be the first millionaire in your family, you got to go through things most people don't go through. And you start by off starting a business that 
nobody in your family has done before, right? I'm not saying that I'm not, I have a few people in my family that are entrepreneurs, but nobody's a YouTuber. That's me. <laughs> that was such a hard thing to claim a few years ago, but I'm a YouTuber, right? I help people, inspire them to create something that is for them, for their clients, and to be passionate and inspired to continue moving forward. <sighs> So my prayer for you, my wish for you, is that you find fulfillment with whatever you want to do. This video is probably extremely long, so I do apologize in advance. But I know for those of you who needed to hear it, and for those of you who it resonates with, it's for a reason, right? If any time I get inspired to share something about my own experience, I know someone else out there needed. Even if it's just 50 people, right? 50 people, one person. I know you need to hear this. So I'm going to tell you this. Whatever, wherever you are in your life, right? Whether you're getting clients, whether you're starting out, whether you're not even knowing where to go. I would say keep going, right? Every single day, do something small towards your dreams of coming true. And you'd be surprised at how fast the blessings come into it. Another lesson I want to leave you guys off of, and this is my last one, is celebrate yourselves. Celebrate the small wins in your life celebrate the money that comes in from someone else's pocket to yours celebrate when you get to design for someone's memorable events celebrate when people ghost you and give you a hard time because those experiences will never happen again because you've learned your lesson celebrate everything and enjoy this portion of your journey right give great gratitude give grace because you'll never have this moment again <laughs> I will never leave a nine to five again. <laughs> that is monumental. I'm gonna make this work, and as long as y'all are by my side, we're gonna work. We're gonna make it work together. So, I love you with all of my heart and soul. If you have made it to the end of this video, please, please comment down below. Tell me, where are you on your journey? You know, answer some of the questions that were mentioned in this video. And if you need help, I'm here to help. There are a few links down below of my coaching programs and decide if it's a good fit for you, you know? And either way, if, even if you don't join and you still stay subscribed, you know, I'm going to be pushing out content until I'm here. <laughs> All right, guys, continue designing your dreams into reality. Mwah! I love you all. Thank you for listening to my story and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.